Hey everybody and welcome to Day Glue Today. Today I'm going to do a little bit something a little different. It's going to be OBS NDI setup when it comes to everything that you need. Now I figured out that the OBS to OBS setup, which is using two different versions of OBS, makes it complete dog shit. And I would not recommend having an OBS and an OBS doing both NDI plugins when it comes to like 10 gig networking, especially if you're going to be doing 4K 60 plus. So I want to get right into it when it comes to everybody here. So first I have this setup right here and then that's my YouTube stuff. So first you need to go here and just do new NDI, NDI tools, right? You go here, you get the most recent form and you download it. Once you have it downloaded, right you're gonna go into your folders download the runtime then once you have the runtime then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go to wherever you put it so for myself I think I put it here I put it here new tech new tech tools right and then we're gonna go to scan converter okay you want to pin it I have it already pinned down here so what I do is that I run it and as soon as it's running, it shows your frame rate, which is down here, which is use monitor frame rate, which I mean, it's 144 Hertz. So then you'll be able to capture at that frame rate to another computer, another streaming computer. This is not for this. This is for you to capture it on the network first more than anything else. You can do 60 frames. You can do 59.94. You can go all the way down to 30 frames. If you want to go cinematic and just do the 29.97, that's fine. But the other thing you have to do is that you have to turn your audio source to system audio so that you can capture on your streaming computer. Now, if you want to be able to capture both everything else when it comes to your audio and to have this as well, it's not going to work specifically because when you're doing this through the NDI, you can only do like one form of plugin. So you have system audio and then microphone blue snowball. You can't do both for some reason, which is kind of weird, especially in this panel, but it would, you would be able to customize it more if you just like tinker within the inside setup, or you can set up something like an audio source, like banana or something else like that. Well, which will make it really easy. And again, this is something where you need to have 10 gig cards if you want to do 4K 60 FPS and you want to be able to stream your whole monitor onto a 4K 60 capture on top of everything else. So it's the same thing on my other computer, which I have right here as well. I have it working already on the NDI. This is my gaming computer going to my streaming computer so that I can show people what to do and a few other things and it's the same thing as the ndi source so if i go here there's my ndi source that is for my monitor which is up here this is for my live streaming stuff which is for twitch and youtube which is 1080p 60 fps but if you want to do higher you have to kind of tweak your monitor to make it spoof to be a like a 4k monitor in that kind of regard which you can flash but at the same time you want it what i would recommend is get a cheap 4k monitor so that you can capture it and then you're able to go on over to your main panel which is over here the main panel and you will be able to do all of your frame rates at like 60 your monitor frame rate which is higher it's the same thing when you set up your settings on another version of OBS, whether it's Streamlabs or actual OBS or whatever, it's right here for you. Of course, with Streamlabs, it's a little bit easier for everybody to use in this regard. But again, it, the process is still the same. Then you also have to go back to here. You have to go to the OBS and DI plugin tools. Now, Again, if you want to use it with OBS, you have to install the NDI tools. You not only have to get the tools here 
so that you can have it linked through your network properly. But then you'll be able to have everything else, which is the bandwidth. The bandwidth is pretty much the biggest concern when it comes to your network. Now, if you see here, right here, 1920, 1080, 30 FPS, most of your connections with a gigabit connection can only handle that or less, okay? And that's over the network, and that's what you have right now. Now, currently, like I said, I'm doing 1080 over a signal, but this is a 1440p monitor at 144 hertz because I'm not doing anything in specific like that. You, you can see right here that most of my signal is 150 across the board. It's 150 both down and up. Your send and read speeds are like that. So you're reading all the speeds. So if you're sending the signal, that is what I'm doing to the other computer. So it's not only doing both because I have NDI open over here so that I can show you guys, but I also have NDI open here. Otherwise you would see your send the only thing to work and not the read because the read is what I'm doing right here to read this version right here. So that this is what it comes down to when it comes to just seeing the signal and the bandwidth. So again, when we're going into the, the 4K version of, of all NDI, now this works with all the requirements. It works as soon as you get it in. And because I have SDK plugin ability, because again, that's a form of 10 gig internet, you can have SDK, SDK plus, and you can have the same type of bandwidth when it comes to that kind of configuration. I have pure copper wires, which can do 10 gig read and write speeds available whenever I'm doing this kind of stuff. Whenever I transfer files, it makes it so simple. The only thing that would be the limitation to your stuff is the hardware. Like if you do a hard drive to hard drive, of course, it's not going to get up to 10 gig speeds. But if you're doing like a flash, kind of like an SSD RAID, to another SSD RAID, that would be something in similar occurrence when you're putting everything together. And again, this is one thing that really makes the rubber meet the road. Now, not like for what I was talking about before with the other connections, because this is a OBS with a plugin, and then the main thing that you're capturing, your gaming system, will need to have your NDI tool activated. And as soon as you have the NDI tool activated, which is right here, you put this frame rate all the way up. And then after you have your frame rate locked to use monitor frame rate on top of everything else, as soon as you have everything configured here, you don't need to touch this. There is no open window, right? There is nothing. So imagine just straight this. Right, and then you're just doing your source or whatever, and you're seeing your setup right here, okay? All you're doing is seeing your monitor for whatever game that you're going to be playing, and that's it. You're not gonna be seeing OBS up, like, tat, well, you should, I only have task manager up for display purposes. Steam, Discord, I mean, you're gonna always have Discord, and what, then whatever you wanna play, and you can actually separate your audio compared to other things that would be capturing. So if you wanna have something like Banana, um, a voice meter tool so that it has all the plugins, so it's only your game, and then let's say you wanna have your own audio set up right here, you'll be fine. Nobody will hear it on the stream, even if it's a 4K60 stream. The reason why NDI is so good is that it only uses network, okay? Anything on the network. And you have something that is either unsupported or supported that makes it extremely powerful. Now, because this is extremely powerful to what you can do, especially with NDI, I can have more than one camera. I can have 80 cameras in this room. I can be tracking my vibe with using NDI, but I mean, you already have a tracker that would be available for it. But then there'll be other things that could add to that ability that could be like, ah, maybe I haven't thought about that. Like, let's say that you wanna have a camera outside. You can do this wirelessly as well on top of anything else. So if you have your setup connected to the actual network, 
okay, and it's connected wirelessly and it has built-in NDI configuration tools, you're set. You can have maybe like a little laptop somewhere off in the distance. Maybe you're making a cooking show or you want to do something like that or you want to get that one recording and then send it through the network. As long as you have a good signal, like your stuff is going to be fine. Now, 4K60 over wireless, you, of course, you're not going to do that. If you have a 10 gig network switch slash Wi-Fi that has the most updated firmware as well as the most recent BIOS for that network switch, you're going to be crazy good when it comes to most of this kind of setup. And yes, you might have some challenges with some configuration. I had those same challenges. That's why at the beginning of the video, I said, do not have both OBS on one computer and OBS on another computer. It's bad. You might as well just have the connection right there. And just like with this video, this is going to be 4K60 all the way through and through for all this. So if you guys like this kind of video, please leave a like, leave a comment down below. And if you really like my stuff, I have my Teespring shirts up. I have one shirt, I have one blanket, and I have cases that are pretty cool. So if you really want to get into that stuff and you want to support me, instead of like going onto and donating to a Patreon or whatever, I'd rather just you guys be like, you know what? I really like your stuff and I like your shirt. So again, have a good one guys.